Hey guys, what's up? It's Wolf here, one and only. Before we get started, uh, a little bit of like patch notes things. Metis is coming back and the Star Marble event is disappearing. So without further ado, let's get into the farming guide that everybody's been asking for multiple times. So first things first, let's go over pretty much the standard place to farm equipment. Standard place to farm equipment is Raid right over here. Raid is actually pretty straightforward. You have a boss that you guys go in together. You have like a full team. You don't use your characters only anymore. You use your characters and a whole team. So it's basically how uh, Nobla used to be. But the rewards in here are actually pretty good for Raid. So Raid is something that is actually recommended to do every day. So you can get the highest equipment weapons in the game. You can equip them even on like level one characters just because they don't really have a limit. They just basically tell you what kind of level weapons they are, how like how strong they are level wise. And then you have your transcended equipment fragments, which you put into your uh, transcended weapons for each class inside of hero growth here. And that's pretty much where that goes. And then it also gives jewels, which jewels are pretty important now. Which they made like really important since you can now go to ultimate with the jewels when combining. And then there are limit break stones. Limit break stones will limit break your max enhancement weapon to ultimate. So yeah, that's where you want to farm all of this stuff. Equipment stuff, anything dealing with equipment and expanding your weapons are all inside of raid. So next, let's get into... Um, Gold farming. Gold farming is pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Most of the time you want to come in here into the world bosses. Any world boss that is up, you want to farm. All right, and here's the amount of gold you would get for world boss if you were to survive the 10 minutes. So you gotta survive exactly 10 minutes in order to get this much gold. This is the maximum. It doesn't really matter about your score as long as you outlive 10 minutes you get the full maximum gold and you will basically get a million gold every day as long as you do this so yeah not many people do that for when it comes to world boss which some of you guys need to especially if you're in a dire need of gold because gold does deplete very fast so that's one way to get gold the other way to get other resources in gold are through our magic friends the pigs here and the pig dungeon is actually pretty straightforward and these are the rewards they give you if you can make it to the final stage these are the rewards you would get and these are other rewards I'm pretty sure you can make it to the final stage because it's actually pretty easy actually pretty easy yeah I'm not so sure but for you guys but yeah get seven each of these random things you can either get up to three or five essence, I believe. And I think you can only get like one of each for these for like every summon. But they do have like a rare event that pops up where you can get um, twice as much as you receive. Like if you get five of these, you actually end up getting 10. And if you get one of these, it actually makes a duplicate and you get two of these. If you get a triple S, you would end up getting a duplicate of that. It's like a times two event. It's like a new times two event where you get a duplicate of that character that you receive. It's actually pretty nice. It pops up like rarely though. Um, event shops are another way to get like good resources for events when they come by. If you're in need of like allies, go for it. I wouldn't even recommend spending on allies though because you don't really get much out of it. But there are also like accessories which don't pop up in farming anymore. So you can't really get accessories through farming. You can only get through events or the secret shop that pops up down here now and then on the weekends. On the weekends, it's definitely best to get those. Uh, if you guys do run into the secret shop with these trink trinkets or accessories, it is probably best to get those because those are really good and they're going to help you with farming. Um, if you get three of them, you'll be golden. Uh, the only reason I got two was because they get they handed them out for free, and I was like way back then. But these accessories are really good.
good. I bought one of them from Secret Shop when it had popped up. So I needed my last one. Which these things pop up now and then. There's even um, an order one. Griffin order. And there's also another one, but it's through like purchase. So yeah, those are a few accessories that'll help you out. The other accessory that will help you out is inside of a coin shop, which is in the fight. And it is the prepared adventurer ring. So if you're in need of it, grab it. If you're a new player, try to save up your coins and grab these. Put it on your main characters. It only works for heroes, so you can only put it on heroes. Well, the status effects only work on the heroes, that is. Maybe they changed it. But yeah, make sure to put it on your heroes so you guys can get like some extra gold and XP if you're leveling. Uh, nothing else is really unique in the coin shop. But now, let's get into runes and enhancements and stuff like that. So, most of the time you want to up your skill cards and your runes and your transcendent equipment here. So, transcendent equipments and runes, easy to farm, but they're a daily thing. And that's where a daily dungeon comes into play. Character enhancements can only be grabbed here or through like events. They can also be get by and logins. Like special logins that pop up. Some of this stuff can be acquired. But mostly every single day, there are only a daily dungeon. Jewels can be acquired in here and fragments can be required in here. Um, upping your buster really isn't called for, but if you want to, you can get also buy into the Sunday. But the ones I can recommend buying into every single day are the jewel dungeons, the character enhancement dungeons. You have a choice if you want to buy into the transcended essence but eh, it, it's kind of not like a necessity anymore but there are also rune dungeon which is very recommended to buy into and then there is seven emperors equipment those are the four dungeons that I would actually recommend buying into and utilizing because you can combine your jewels together and make pretty much some really strong jewels like down the road to where they become like <laughs> crazy they recently added in like ultimate jewels which give like a huge amount of stat like if you can put like a full six slot ultimate jewels on your characters that's gonna make them insane along with the rest of the characters that follow off that stat of that main character so that's gonna be great as for character enhancements enhancing your character and getting them to ultimate is probably the best thing uh, the main characters that everybody's using right now is priest and archer and encanter those are the main characters everybody are using the rest of the characters aren't really necessities at the moment just because of their passives runes just increase stats of every class and several emperor fragments pretty much increases the special ability of each class so each class has like a special ability that they have like passively that's why you'll see like a little green bar below their names or something as for skill cards skill cards are the only place to farm those are inside a fight and honors gorg and those are only collectible at Orc Fortress. And skill cards are not the only thing the Orc Fortress has. It also has runes that are rarely, and I do mean rarely, drop along with normal cards that rarely drop too. Pretty much kill everything, get to the end boss, which is actually pretty easy to get to because you basically will outclass them in any way. You get a pretty decent amount of skill cards, but as you're fighting these guys, they don't really drop any runes or or cards but at the end of it of finishing it they do give you skill cards but here's the thing about orc fortress repeating it uses more and more tickets 
So as you can see, I want to do it twice. That just costs three. Then, I want to do it a third time. That costs seven. Boom. Starts jumping up in how much you consume. Oh, that uses 15. Oh, 30. As you can see, it starts to largely go up each time you repeat it. So if I was to do this, I would only be able to do it 55 times, so I would use all of my tickets. Uh, the maximum I can say to use if you have a whole bunch is probably 6 to 7. That's only if you have a whole lot like me. But I would recommend 5 for newer players. Alright, so now, the final part. Well, yeah, you do have a um, tower, but tower is like really difficult. It's, it's like insanely difficult for newer players. It's mostly an in-game thing in-game content to where you can farm like these stuff which is really difficult to get to you can see there's some rubies in there they're not really much all these rewards are pretty medi mediocre they're not like anything that's they're not really anything worth coming in here and doing tower for unless you're actually bored considering they don't have like really good rewards like this would be good if there were like actual soul summons not like actual character summons because they aren't useful anymore but with that all out of the way now let's get into rubies the main bread and butter of the game and probably what you guys want to know so ruby farming is actually pretty easy just do every last content so right now this is how much you would get for competing inside of world boss world boss just placements are actually easy you will barely ever be down here just because of lack of players like we still have a pretty decent amount of players as you can see they're pushing me back but you will mostly end up around here at max as long as you do the event or here will probably stop you but you still get a thousand rupees either way you will never end up down here unless we get like a shit ton of players playing which i'm kind of doubting as for world boss now as for arena arena does give you a pretty decent amount too only if you're around like well yeah it's still the same thing for like bosses and stuff well world boss you still get a decent amount you will never be down like all the way down here unless you don't do it at all you will still get a huge amount of rubies as you can see this game is actually pretty damn generous with its placings and I that I actually appreciate that and also here is league battle where you just put in your characters and it auto battles at a certain schedule and it tells you pretty much who wins who what loose what losses you got what wins you got and it gives you like a placement league the placement leagues are actually pretty easy and straightforward to understand uh, if you're a normal league you only get around this much if you're inside of hero league you only get around this much and if you're inside DFI, which I used to be in like all the time, you get around a thousand. But if you're inside of a Transcendent League, where I start to pop up now and then, you would get around this much if you're like first place. And Overlord League, that's where you want to be, for sure. Like these guys get a crap ton of rubies. So create a PvP team and you would get like way more rubies than anybody in the game to be honest and another place to get rubies and coins is doing guild events there's guild takeover to where you can fight like other guilds pretty much like a guild battle pretty much conquer like these spots and take over their shields pretty straightforward it doesn't have limit locks so you can use your characters no matter how many times you want <laughs> unlike a certain game but yeah the bigger the guild, the more castles they will have, and the more people they will match you up with. But they matched us up with one person missing from ours, and them having a full castle. But that's the thing, we could still win, as long as everybody's active. So that activates in like, a whole eight hours. <laughs> There's also guild tournaments, to where you can put in your guild members, and you guys can fight. to see who's going to represent the um, guild and once you find a rep for your guild 
your rep the person who's gonna rep your guild is gonna go out and fight other people who's representing their guild and pretty much who wins gives you rubies depending on where your um, representative places and then there's guild loot which is probably the most complicated one um, guild loot is the main source of PvE rubies um, pretty much let's go to the basics of what's gonna happen pretty much you and your guild are gonna fight together to complete all this and at the end of it whoever's participated gets rubies at the end but whoever has done the most damage and taken the most percentage will get more rewards as long as you compensate you know let's say you take like 10% of this you will get like probably 10 rubies or 100 rubies depending on which one number one is the strongest it's gonna take the longest to actually defeat so as long as you attack once make like a good um, but try to get in a good like billion or at least four billion three billion that will also that will put in your score and once everybody else completes it you will still get rewards for it even though you didn't do like the most damage as long as you attack it you're good but I attacked it once and I guess they don't register like really really low scores so try to make a decent amount in there um, us we make like a set date to do this and finish all the towers we try to get everybody in to attack it at least once before everybody starts to mowing them down but other guilds will probably mow them down in like one day no first come first serve which eh, that's the way they work so yeah you gotta keep that in mind these whole placement guild things don't mean anything that just means who finished them first <gasps> sorry pick up but basically that just means who ever finished them first I believe and the loot that's pretty much the, how much I got last week and that's how much I compensated for that's just my placement and everything I basically, I basically just attack one to let the guild have the rest of the compensation. So yeah, that's pretty much how much damage I did and how much I got for it in return, just for attacking once. And then there's expiration that pops up now and then where you guys can get like uh, transcended essence, allies, shoes, like all kinds of random stuff. And then there's guild battle, which now counts as a world boss. So yeah, pretty much it's still the same thing. So if you guys have any other questions, let me know down in the comments and I'll try to help you guys out the best I can. Uh, make sure to always set up your pets the way you want them to know, like auto combine, like allies, auto combine, like equipment, like jewels, or convert your equipment into um, essence. If you already have like a full set and everything you want to convert them into great essence, so you can go in here and buy like jewels instead um jewels are really easy to get and attain just because like i said if you convert them into these essence you can just easily come in here and buy these so you can just basically just auto raid and come back in the morning and see that you have a whole bunch of essence it's just start going on the buying spree of whatever you need this is the best place to find to buy like these jewels other than just doing um daily dungeon so that's basically the basics of farming inside of dragon blades it's actually pretty simple um also where it, where you want to farm like essence and stuff is in here you get essence allies gold and that's pretty much it from here uh this is going to be the main place where you farm because you can no longer farm in story Challenger Tower is where you basically farm now. So you would turn on auto. Then you can farm offline to where the app is closed, but it will still farm for you. But you have to click this. You can't just turn off your farm and then you'll be like, oh, it's going to auto farm for me. You have to turn this on. It's going to farm for eight hours. Then once it hits eight hours, you're going to see a little one next on the icon if you have that on I think but yeah your game will tell you when it's basically done when you see the little one 
on your icon that's notifying you that it's been eight hours and it's done. Not many people actually know that. Also, there's a burn gauge, which the burning gauge actually gives you this bonus stuff. Once you run out of burning points, you no longer get this buff anymore. That means it's you're pretty much getting like the standard rewards from everything. So yeah, remember, four burning points per dungeon, or per like run, and once you run out, these buffs will no longer be activated once you run out of burning points. So to make sure your character still is farming like auto, where you're like offline, make sure to turn off this. Because once you're out of burning points, this will stop your auto run and you'll just get the note. You just get the little one next to yourself and it just says, hey, you're pretty much done, dude. Or you can turn off your burning gauge and save it until you're maxed out again. Then do a whole run for that, for that eight hours. That's basically how to utilize your burning gauge. You basically just come in here and farm. So pretty straightforward. I hope you guys, hope that really helps you guys out because a lot of you guys have been asking for like a guide on that. And I have delivered. So, yeah, with that said, hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you guys on uh, the next one. Until then, peace out. Where it's gonna get better real soon. Don't let anyone tell you what you should do. I got a clear view. We're gonna make